it's my pleasure to introduce my friend Murad, or Murad in Arabic. Gutkin is from Turkey and has been coming to this meeting for over a decade now. Murad has established a center for HPV screening and management with vaccine in Turkey, which is probably a prototype for the whole of Europe. Uh, Murad is going to speak about uh, the HPV vaccines, current state of the art, and future perspectives. You are very welcome, Murad. Thank you so much, uh, dear Martin and Said. Also, uh, my dear friends, Reda, Ahmed, uh, always a pleasure to be here. You know, there's a big program, WHO, Cervical Cancer Elimination Program. We need to come much more frequently together, give hands together. We need African hubs. We need more trainings for Africa, for vaccine, for screening, for surgery, for radiotherapy. One hour later, Pan-African countries meeting will start in the next room. And I hope our collaborations for many years will give, at the end, the good product for whole Africa. We want to see Egypt to lead the whole continent. That's why ESGO, European Society of Gynecology, Oncology, is really giving very much importance to Cairo and to Egyptian colleagues. We have now two accredited centers, and hopefully we will have more in Cairo uh, and more collaboration. So my dear friends, I want to talk first. Today we are talking about HPV vaccination. It's a very popular topic nowadays, many patients. But let's talk first about the natural infection, what's happening in unvaccinated population. Because in Turkey, in Cairo, in Africa, a great majority is already unvaccinated. So let's see what's happening in the natural infection. Then we will try to summarize the current status in the vaccine and what's expected in the close future in Africa and in our region. So this is the unvaccinated people. This is the HPV vaccine, the most beautiful vaccine in the world, the most common infection, maybe much, much more common than a common cold. So the risk of an HPV infection in your life is more than 70%. So nobody can end his life without having an HPV infection. This is the probable statistic. And uh, usually it's sexually transmitted. But I know how it is a difficult topic in our population to discuss with the ladies. But don't forget, it's not only sexual transmission. You have also vertical transmission, horizontal transmission. Day by day, we are learning more about HPV. It's 30 years that we have discovered HPV virus. We learned that reusable speculum, even shade clothings now, can transmit HPV. Day by day, we are learning more. Of course, we have more than 200 types. But two types is very important, 16 and 18 which is 70% of the cancers, two-thirds of the cancers, which is the target for all of us, and also the genital wards, 6 and 11. So what happens in the unvaccinated population, you have a cellular immunity and you have a humoral immunity, antibody. In 97% of the cases, your body will make HPV negative in two years. So you can follow these patients by the uh, body immunity, cellular immunity will negative. But this negativity will never be a forever. HPV is a latent infection, and these ladies, even they become negative, have a chance to reactivation. So five years, seven years later, she can have the same reactivation and the same HPV infection. So babe, if you are not vaccinated, you are not guaranteed to be protected forever. In the natural immunity, always you have a chance. Of course, we also develop antibodies. But half of us can develop. And this is very low threshold, low level, low avidity. So we don't trust to do natural antibodies. Cellular immunity is better. But at the end, even if you become negative, you always have a chance in the natural immunity for a reactivation or a reinfection with a new partner. This is what vaccine gives an advantage to the ladies. If you vaccinate your girls 100%, you can protect her from HPV infection at the primary level. If you are vaccinated, because we will see that the vaccine antibodies are totally different from the natural antibodies. So this is the vaccine. 
there is no DNA in it. It's like we just like particle, empty, but the most potent immunogen in the world. Neither of any other vaccines had the chance to produce such high level, such durable, sustainable antibodies yet. Once you make a vaccine, when she is 12 years old, probably she will have a long, last living antibodies, probably at least 30 years. You remember H hepatitis B vaccine, you always do a booster dose every five years. In HPV, this is the mechanism, it's the most potent immunogen vaccine. How it uh, reacts, you know, uh, in the other vaccines, we produce antibodies from the B cells. But these uh, antibodies are virus-like particles. The vaccine goes to the bone marrow, produces an oligomer there like this, and they use not the B cells, but plasma cells. So high level, durable, more ability, uh, and that's why in the vaccinated population, still we have never observed any breakthrough infections or vaccine failure. Yes, we have now in the market three vaccines, the bivalent, 16 and 18, quadrivalent, including the genital wart type, 6 and 11, and the recent nonovalent HPV vaccine. That includes five additional oncogenic type. The bivalent and quadrivalent cancer protections is around 70%, but in the quadrivalent, it's minimally 90%, uh, so 20% more compared to the other. And these are the global trials of these three vaccines. All these vaccines are not something new. At least they are 12 years old. So we have long-term data. And these are the names of these trials. Future One, Nordic, uh, Protocol 001 to 007, or Patricia Vivian. But if you go to all these trials, first of all, I want to underline that. There is no male male vaccination data for bivalent vaccines. So if you are talking about male vaccination, there is no data for the bivalent vaccine. So you should only use quadrivalent or nonavalent. And all these vaccines, first two they use studies in ages 16 to 25. Then they do immunobridging for younger, nine to 15. And finally, the third trial is always in the elderly vaccination. So the ladies over 25. So these three trials is very typical for all vaccines. And what all these trials showed us today, the long-term 12 years follow-up, this is the bivalent published in Lancet, all are very recent in last two years. Based on the WHO program, we are publishing day by day new data. This is Costa Rica, the most important bivalent vaccine trial. And among the vaccinated girls, there is no any HPV infection or HPV related disease, 100% efficacy. And for the quadrivalent data, this is the uh, Nordic data published by Kujaya. Again, in the quadrivalent, in the uh, young girls, there is no any, any infection, 100% protection. And a little bit elderly, 16 to 26, if you make to your children, again, still after 14 years, there is no any HPV 16 or 18 related CIN2 plus relation. Very nice immunogenicity, 100% seropositivity, and still high level antibodies. This is for males data, the for, uh, quadrivalent vaccines, and among the males again after 10 years, we see still high level of antibodies and no any anogenital lesion within the males. And this is the third vaccine, nonovalent vaccine. We have uh, around eight years follow-up in this vaccine. And as you can see again, very high level compared to the natural antibodies, durable, sustainable antibodies for all HPV types. And the clinical efficacy in nine to 15 years, boys and girls is again, hundred uh, percent. There's no any lesion reported yet, but these were clinical trials done by the uh, vaccine companies. We do also have real world data. If you today start vaccination in Cairo, first you will see very short immediate effect in the genital ward. In two or three years, the genital ward will finish in Cairo if you start today. In the four to five years, you see decreases in pap smear abnormalities, CIN2 and CIN3, and after 10 years, 
you see the real degrees in the cervical carcinoma. This is the real world data from Australia, this year published in Lancet. You see here the girl's vaccination and then boys plus girl, so gender neutral. I think uh, there is no anymore Australian girls or boys with genital warts. They finished it in a 15 years story. So this is wonderful. And the same is for the whole global world. If you collect, this is the data. How much early you start, that much efficacy you, you see. How much good coverage, that's wonderful. If you vaccinate the girls in a high coverage, you even see the degrees in the boys. This is the third, fourth, fifth year. You see the degrees in SCIN2, SCIN3, pre-invasive diseases. Again, the trend is the same. How much early you do the vaccination, that much effect, very shortly you see it. And in the elderly, the effect is getting less. This is, uh, as a prevention committee member, we, he did a very nice Mark Arvin Cochrane review on that. I just wanted to underline this reality, which is very frequently asked by our patients, even after HPV positivity. If you make one dose of vaccine, you can still decrease the risk of HPV-related disease by 50%. So ideally, the young age, 12, before HPV, but even in positive phases, please offer uh, opportunistic vaccination. And at the 10 year in these real world data, we now started to see the real degrees in the invasive cervical carcinoma. It was first Finland to publish. This is followed by Sweden, United States, Denmark, and finally UK. In all countries, what you see, minimum, minimum, even with the bivalent vaccine, minimal 90% degrees in invasive cervical carcinoma. This is wonderful, wonderful. This is a CVD data. Please see. This is very early age vaccinated, almost zero. But here, the unvaccinated population, around 600 invasive cancers. See? They are now age 30. And they have 600 invasive cancers compared to only 20 in the vaccinated population. And of course, based on all these trials, license of the vaccines has been updated. This is the European and United States, the latest uh, license. There is no any upper age limit. So you can offer even for elderly, starting the vaccination at nine years. And if you are talking about the male vaccination, it's only quadrivalent or nanovalent vaccine. And as you can see, last year, oropharyngeal cancer approval has been gathered by, uh, by the vaccines. This is the doses. Uh, currently, the official WHO recommendation, before age 15, two doses with uh, six months apart. After age 15, you need three doses, zero, two, and six. These are minimal intervals that you have to keep. So if a patient is poor, you can give the first vaccine. The second can be minimally at the second month, but you can delay third, fourth, fifth. So these intervals are minimal. Please relax the patient if she has some autonomic characteristics. She can have the second dose one year later even, but do the dose. And of course, we have some source of discussions about the side effects. First of all, I want to show you this WHO release. I have never seen such type of a statement for, from WHO for any vaccine. What they say is extremely safe. We did millions of coronavirus vaccine. Print about the safety data of these vaccines. This is the only vaccine that WHO says extremely safe. It's very closely monitored because it's not neonatal vaccine. It is an adolescent vaccine. And the girls talk, the girls say to each other the side effects. So I think one of the best monitored uh, vaccines with respect to the side effects. Very commonly asked side effect is the premature ovarian failure. Thanks to our Danish colleagues, finally they have fantastic registry of vaccinated studies and they have compared half million vaccinated versus half million unvaccinated population in the JAMA 
and showed no difference. And of course, we had some future prospects. What is expecting us in the future in the vaccines? First of all, uh, WHO has announced we are starting to eliminate the cervical cancer. Vaccine all the girls, screen all the ladies, treat all the ladies. The time interval until 2030. Now the countries work, even my country, no vaccination. Now they are talking and implementing HPV vaccine now. Of course, China started many countries. Last year, uh, I think uh, seven African countries introduced vaccines. So uh, there is a very high rapid increase in the demand. Supply was not sufficient. But now, this is the monetization of WHO and what we see, the, uh, uh, the companies of the vaccines increase their capacity. We are in a green uh, zone, we are safe. There will be no shortage. So there will be no any vaccine crisis in our countries. And two more new vaccines is coming. One is from China and the other is from India, probably cheaper. They are already PQ'd at the WHO, but let's see their at least long-term result. And another very hot uh, future prospect is the single dose for African and poor countries. Can a single dose vaccine work? Or should we really have to make three dose? Well, everything started with two trials. This is bivalent Costa Rica. This is uh, quadrivalent Indian studies. They have uh, 10 years follow up. Actually, they were not uh, randomized studies for a single dose, but they have postdoc analysis showing clinical efficacy that one dose can work. We discussed at the WHO at that time, these two data was not sufficient. Then WHO started two recent randomized trials, one in Kenya, one in Tanzania. Of course, these countries are selected because we are focusing for Africa, for single dose. And Benchi, Kenya data uh, is a little bit more elderly, as you can see, and Tanzania data is for ages nine. So uh, sexual uh, coitus is positive in the Kenya data, but negative in the Tanzania data. So let's see all these four trials. This is Costa Rica trial showing that single dose vaccine still says antibody levels. This is the natural antibody, at least 10 times worse, and clinically, immunogenically, it works. This is the Indian data done by WHO IR. Again, one dose, two dose, three dose, a postdoc analysis showing same 95% clinical efficacy for single dose. And we had recent Kenshi data. This was done in, you know, in Kenya and showing that the girls receiving one dose, only one dose nonavalent vaccine can have similar efficacy at the end of three years. And the fourth trial, remember, was Doris trial done in Tanzania, and their result is also published this year, three months ago in Lancet, showing again that uh, at the end of three years, the girls receiving single dose of bivalent or non-avalent vaccine have 95% seropositivity, very high level and equal level of antibody compared to two dose or three dose, and uh, also, they even uh, breached these antibody levels to Indian study showing that these levels are already effective in the clinical uh, respect. So avidity, seropositivity levels are fantastic. And uh, that is the end of the WHO, including these observational previous studies, some modeling studies, for example, for Cairo, showing that what can happen if we start with a single dose? Well, it works in the modeling studies too. This is what they receive. So under discussion in the literature, suggests in these two graphs that uh, for girls below age 15, you can make single dose. For girls over age 15 to 20, again, a single dose can work. But after 21 years old, minimally two dose. Don't forget, 
This is currently the recommendation of the sport trial, not still official WHO position. So the blue one, official. This one is still under consideration and we need your feedback. We need the feedback of Africa too. From the ESGO, we already give our deprivation committee, give our response on a paper uh, that will be published this one. For us, it's very clear that single dose is always better than no dose. If you are going to Congo, no vaccination for 30 years, they can start with a single dose. But for uh, other countries that already implemented the vaccination program, high coverage, successful, they should a little bit wait more because we have some more trials done by NCI and let's see some more long-term results of a single dose. So the answer is that if you want to start, you may, but please monitor the scientific data and accommodate based on your interest plan. My dear friends, this is the colonization data, my final slide showing you that if you make CIN2, CIN3, colonization or LEAP, you can make vaccines here. This decreases the recurrence of CIN2 or 3 minimally around 60%, in the Italian randomized trial, 80%. We have four more randomized control trials, and let's see their results. So this is ESGO Prevention Committee. We have collected all famous HPV experts of Europe, and we are just here to answer your questions. These are the questions coming from you, single dose, two dose, three dose, screening, via, we really, we are trying to give the best scientific experiences to you and to you and it's my pleasure honor uh, uh, to uh, host you in Istanbul a few months later <laughs> Ahmed I have coming here four times five times now it's time for you <laughs> <laughs> if you come here anybody coming I will make a single dose HPV <laughs> promise <laughs> thank, you. Th thank you very much Murat for this uh, very nice overview on the major topic there is a modification in the program. Professor El Said will do now the, the next <coughs> presentation about conservative approach and fertility sparring management. Professor El Said is working.